Okay, we are. And we're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. We got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Kentucky has happened, and it actually has something interesting come out of it. Actually, a few things. Uh, and on top of that, we got a special guest tonight who will be coming on in just a little bit. The return of Eric Eastep and a special story at the end of the show that I think will warm everybody's hearts. I'm the Iceberg, and this is the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Green flag, green flag. I'll roll, I'll roll. All right, so we're all we're here, uh, and man, it's it's good to be back. Uh, Danny will be on a little later, and Eric will too. We'll get the the return of them. Let me just get Darian's settings all good here, so that you can you can hear him. Uh, yeah, so he's ready to go. Uh, it's good to be back, y'all. Um, everything's looking good. Uh, yeah, so we got plenty to go off of tonight. Uh, we got. The Kentucky race, points run down. John Krasinski actually made NASCAR news this week. That's pretty cool. Uh, and on top of that, you know, different stuff with testing. There's actually Gen 7 news, real concrete Gen 7 news, so that's pretty good. Uh, TV rating news, uh, some good stuff for Chevy uh, on top of just the win. There's a little more significance to this than you would think. Uh, Natalie Decker, some blink of the eye stuff. <laughs> It it's gonna be a fun show. So uh, I'll hand it off, Darian. How you doing tonight? For our special guest comes on and let's hear uh, from you, man. I'm doing good, dude. Um, I had a I had a fun time out in L.A. with Joseph Lombard and Brendan Littell. Uh, went go karting, even uh, saved a kid's life. I guess. Well, that's a bit of a that's exaggerating a little bit though. But I uh, was out at at Irwindale Speedway, saw Ryan Vargas race. Uh, that was pretty cool. And then um, you know we'll even talk about him later on in the show too. That's a pretty exciting announcement today as well. Um, so yeah, like it's just the two of us though, so it's not a BS stream, but <laughs> kind of feels like it honestly, like a little bit I guess. You could say but don't worry we'll have all of the panel on in the second half for sure um so really quick um our special guest tonight is cj mclaughlin he is a an an arca series driver and truck series driver made one truck series start this season um and he's also making his xfinity series debut this weekend at new hampshire um so we're actually about to call him right now um he can't get into the hangouts unfortunately so we'll just uh, do a, a, a little call-in thing so Going back right to our roots. It. Yep, going back to the roots, man. Let's get into it. And I'll keep the screen on Darian for right now as we get the call in. Uh... Hello. Hey, CJ, how's it going, man? Oh, it's going good. Yeah, so we're live right now. Um, I have my special. Um, um, I have my my other podcast panel uh, member on here, uh, Jarrett. Jarrett, say something. How's it going, man? Yeah, no problem, man. So uh, let's get right into it. Uh, we got some questions here for you. Um, so, uh, so for so for some of the fans who may not know you, um, just talk about your racing career up to this point. Okay. Glad uh, I, Darian was. Uh, we were talking before the show, and that you're do you're having your Xfinity debut. And I guess, what are you expecting going into the race? Just put it up against the mic. I don't know. Okay, uh, really quick, CJ. Um, we're having some audio problems right now at the moment. Um, um, can you put your phone on speaker really quick, if you if you can do that? 
Uh, that's, it's actually on speaker right now. Oh, it's on speaker? Yeah, we can hear now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, you can hear now? You guys can hear now, chat? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, sorry, for some reason, yeah, no, uh, the chat can hear you there for a moment there. Um, so, yeah, that's my bad. So, all right, so let's keep uh, let's keep on going. Um, so, um, talk about some of your ARCA and Truck Series starts this season. You've made three ARCA starts. Uh, you have to withdraw from, from one of them, unfortunately. Um, and you made one Truck Series start this season at, at, at Iowa. So, talk about that. Toward the center of the screen. So another you question. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're a lot better. You're a lot better. Yeah. Uh, so I guess just overall with this season and then moving, you know, forward into the future, whether it be you know a few years, I guess what is your overarching uh, goal and, and plan moving forward with your career? Can't hear again. Try holding it towards the center of the screen and lower. Just keep moving around, I'll tell you when. Uh, so uh, my final question for you is, what are your plans for 2020? Uh, is that a bit early um, to be thinking about those things? Or are, are you already um, uh, working out um, some sort of deal uh, to run in, in NASCAR next year? I don't have another one. Okay, so um, really quick, we're gonna take some fan questions here. Yeah, so uh, uh, really quick, sorry to the chat, man. Yeah, we're just currently having some audio problems and stuff. So if you can barely hear him, that is my bad. But um, let's see, um, if we have any questions in the chat, feel free uh, to uh, answer right now. I'm, I'm gonna be picking two and then uh, we'll have you on your way here in a, in a moment, CJ. So let's see. All right. Yeah. That sounds good right there where he's at. Uh, okay. I could hear him there. Okay. Right, cool. Yeah, there's one uh, from Mark Silas, TMG13, says, why is uh, CJ running 39? Yes, that would be a good one. Yeah, so, so Mark asks, why are you why are you running the 39? Um, I don't think you're running the 39 car this weekend, actually. Aren't you running the 93? Uh, Mark is very well informed. We made the decision to run uh, 39 uh, a couple days ago after there were so many people uh, entered into the race. Uh, to give me a guaranteed spot in. Uh, and that reason is just because we have sponsors there, and this is my first time in New Hampshire, first time in an Xfinity car, and it's just, it, it's just a way to make sure that I make the race. Okay, that's good. That's good. Good plan there. Um, another question from Goodyear Racing Network. Uh, do you plan to have a full ride or a, a full-time ride very soon? Yeah, I'm hoping to have a 
full-time ride for next year. I think that'd be a, that'd be a great accomplishment. One of my goals, and so that was really embracing to have you know full full season, um, you know, national touring season. Right on, right on. Let's see. Um, let's see, one last question, too. Let's look at the chat. One last question. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, so, um, basically, uh, what's the end goal here? Like, what's the end goal for UCJ? Uh, um, is the end goal to just, you know, make, an, make a, 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 a NASCAR career, just, you know, uh, running uh, part-time maybe someday, or do you want to be in the Cup Series full-time one day? Can't hear it. Okay, thank you very much, CJ. We're not going to hold you up uh, any anymore. Um, appreciate you uh, coming on the podcast. Yeah. Um, so, really quick, is there any uh, anything you want to maybe possibly shout out, like your Twitter or, or um, you know um, any of your uh, social media accounts, if if you can. You can't hear him. It's li literally mute, man. Okay, thank you very much, CJ. Uh, good luck this weekend, and you have a good one. All right, guys. Thanks so much for having me on. Sorry about the uh, noise issues. That's all good, it's man. All good. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Uh, yeah, so my apologies, chat. Um, uh, the hangout didn't work out for him, so he had to call in. Uh... So yeah, we tried our best with the whole audio issues and stuff. I kept holding the phone up to the mic and stuff. So, um, for so for some of you guys who couldn't hear, um, I'm just gonna go over some of the some of the um, some of the answers uh, he had brought up. Um, he talked about his uh, his uh, his racing career up to this point. He had been running super late models for a while now, and uh, ended up making some ARCA series starts, and ended up making his truck series debut uh, at at Iowa Speedway this year, and is going to be making his Xfinity debut. Um, he also was uh, talking about his plans. His goal is to get in the Cup Series uh, sometime in the future. Um, and also, um, I didn't know this, too. Uh, he is going to be driving the 39 this weekend. I thought he was just going to be driving the 93, but that was a last-minute change right there. Uh, so, yeah, again, sorry for the audio issues. Um, it was a last-minute thing. I kept, As you can see, I kept trying to hold the phone to the mic and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, what the problem is. Um, they could hear me just fine, but I couldn't hear you guys. So, uh, that's our fault. Um, I, well, I'm not sure what, what the deal was, but won't happen again. So, yeah, uh, I guess we can just go right into, uh, talking about the weekend at Kentucky. Uh, so Darren, I guess, what are your thoughts on the race? Well, I was out at, and I was out at, at Irwindale Speedway and, um, I only caught, um, a, a, a glimpse of the race, I guess. Um, I don't know. I think it was around four, um, 40, 30 laps to go during the final green flag pit stops. And uh, the and you know the racing it looked like a typical um kentucky race there was you know it was very spread out there was strategy um taking place that sort of thing um so i i'd say it, it was pretty decent i mean for kentucky race but you know decent for kentucky and decent for daytona are two totally different decents so um i'd say it was it was all right but then um i was also scrolling on twitter and i saw everyone was complaining about the penalties everybody was complaining about the penalties the entire time um william byron apparently jumped the restart um and tried to give it back but nascar was like nah it doesn't matter dude you're still gonna we're gonna put you to the back and hamlin always having some sort of piss of uh, some some pit road mishaps uh had an had an and an, an uncontrolled tire um and then just the just the finish too it was looking like Logano was about to win and i was watching this with brendan latell we were um watching it on his phone and um Essentially, what happened was uh, Papa Wall spun out, and then, uh, you know, they started restarting, and then all of a sudden, you know, Logano had a bad restart, and it was the it was the Bush show pretty much. So the white flag, Kurt Busch was battling for the lead. Him and Kyle Busch were side by side, and Kurt Busch was able to edge him out for the win. And and Jarrett was right on that pick too. I thought it was crazy when he was picking mm -hmm. Kurt Busch, but but yeah. So um, it was a I guess you could say. Um, pretty decent race i guess you could say um i'll give it a uh i I'll, i'd say i give it a maybe a 
six and a half out of ten. So, yeah, six and a half, I, I'd say. So it was a pretty decent race for Kentucky standards. Um, and I mean, Kurt Busch, man, just keeps proving that you know the ones problems from a from from a season ago were mostly based off based on the driver. I'd say I thought it was a team problem, but it was look. Kurt Busch is proving time and time again that it's more it, w- it was more so a driver's problem if anything yeah see this is this is the big problem in the question I posed earlier this week is is does an awesome finish or a good finish make the whole race good um and and personally you know I I go into the category of no but it contributes a lot uh I was not crazy about this race really I mean there was there, you know, there were people coming and going, there was strategy, there was, you know, and so on. Um, but the racing itself, you know, that you could tell like Quint Boyer, for instance, was out front. Quint Boyer had no, uh, real, I, I, I can't say no right, but no real reason to be hanging up front with Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Kurt Busch. His car just wasn't that good. And he held them up. I, I don't know how many laps because it was just, it was too tough to pass out there. Uh, it, it's a, and it's not just a package problem; it's a Kentucky problem. Uh, it, it's been notorious, notoriously horrible to pass at Kentucky. Uh, I I do think it was probably, if not the best, one of the best Kentucky races. But that's not saying much. That's like saying that we painted a turd gold. Uh, it yeah. it was, eh, meh. You know, it wasn't bad. Like it was. I I was still watching, but at the same time. Uh, I, I think if Bubba doesn't spin there and we don't have that finish, we're having people saying how horrible it was. Because the, the whole race, I looked, I, I started avoiding Twitter because it got to the point where it's like, man, like I'm with you. This race ain't good, but you know, Jesus. Uh, the ra- the 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 finish itself, I loved. My grandpa and I were on the edge of our seat watching it together. Uh, you know, and we both like Kurt. We both aren't crazy about Kyle. Uh, so, so we were really invested with it. I was invested with, with how Kurt was doing. Um, but, man, the, the finish is definitely like a, up there like 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. One of the, the best finishes with the Gen 6 car for sure. The race itself wasn't. I'd say overall, I, I gave it a 4.5, just under an average race. It, it was nothing really that special to me, in, in my opinion. Uh, now, I know people differ I, I'll, I'll look in the chat really quick and see what uh you guys are thinking with with the race a lot of but, sevens i saw a lot of sevens in the chat like seven out of tens yeah right. but i mean and, and you know I, I get it some people are probably gonna you know oh you're being negative of it and it's just it what it wasn't for me you know I, I i was happy kurt won uh and i'm glad people enjoyed it you know jeff guck's poll uh i don't know how scientific uh we can make <laughs> that out to be uh, but they put it pretty high up on the list, but I, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of six, six point nine, seven and a half, two, nice. and eight, and eight too. Yeah, I just don't. It, it, I I don't see it really either. I mean, honestly, like I mean, my six and a half um, rating is a little bit generous, I guess you could say. So I mean, but. I don't know like it was um just another kentucky race i mean kentucky's typically never been a very special track in any sort of regard so i don't know it's um i guess you could say it was one of the best kentucky races ever but again that's not really saying much because kentucky doesn't really have a a history of producing great racing and just doesn't yeah and, and again it i <sighs> I am not a package defender in any means, but I don't think you can really. I think you can pin. I think you can pin a, uh, a lot of it on the package, especially with you know the being held up so long. Uh, the restarts obviously were good. Like the the restarts of this package have been improved, but throughout the run for me, I, I it was a normal Kentucky race. It was just closer, and just because it was closer didn't mean it was better. Um, honestly, for most of that race, I felt the same way about it as I did when Truex had an 18 second lead. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's kind of just that again, it's, it, it's a Kentucky thing. Uh, you, you notice that Kansas was much better in Charlotte and, and, and so on. It just seems the flatter, the, the track and, and, the, and, you know, for the most part, uh, and, yeah, it just it seems the flatter the track, really, the, the worse this package seems to do, even if it is at night. I I can't imagine how this race would have been during the day. 
Like, oh, it would have been awful. It would have been awful, dude. It would have been so bad. And, like, so many fans, they were saying, like, they were hyping this race up. Like, oh, well, you guys saw the race at, 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 at Kansas with this and all that. And then, you know, like, oh, maybe this Kentucky race might be, you know, better, uh, you know, the best one ever. I mean, it, again, it wasn't all that special, though. You know, it wasn't all that special um, in that regard. And, uh, I mean, it's it's exactly what I expected, you know, like first 11 laps, you know, close three wide side by side racing. And then, you know, long green flag runs and Sue. And then, you know, it starts to get spread out. You know, um, I will say this though. We did see some surprises. Daniel Suarez was up there for a while longer than I expected, but then uh, he had some pit road problems. I didn't see exactly what happened. I think he had pitted really early and then the caution happened to come out right as he was pitting. So I think that's what happened, but he was able to rebound and uh, score a top 10. So that was pretty good. Um, and again, Kurt Busch locks his way into the playoffs. But the battle for 16th place for the final playoff spot, man, that is getting you want, intense. Right you want to look up really quick the uh, point standings and, and just sort of go over them really quick? Uh, just put them like share screen. Yep, and... I will. I'll go on Racing Reference. Never go on NASCAR.com, man. They always script their, <laughs> their own point standings, dude. Like all the time i don't get it yeah nascar.com as, as a whole is just uh it, it, it's a dumpster fire yeah essentially yeah i remember the days when it was good when it was good you go i would go on there every day after school and just look up look up the pictures and the standings and stuff you know when they actually had you know the right standings so um and then by the way uh so danny should be on any minute now um and cool. eric should be on Definitely in the second half of the show, so uh, stay tuned for that. All right, so and yeah, here's the point standings. Got it. There you go. So here's the point standings right now. Um, Kyle Busch currently, or no, Kyle Busch and Truex tied. Um, Keselowski, Logano, Hamlin, Busch, Elliott, and Bowman, uh, the top eight, are the only winners this season. Well, um, also uh, Justin Haley, yeah, that makes up nine winners, but he's not eligible for the playoffs. Then you have Kevin Harvick, um, who's solidly in the playoffs um, at this point. Eric Amarola, Ryan Blaney, William Byron, Kyle Larson, Clint Boyer, Jimmy Johnson, and last but not least, Eric Jones. Um, and if you look on the other side, Ryan Newman is currently only two points behind Eric Jones, and then followed by Daniel Suarez, who is only four. So and then Stenhouse the race... and Menard are there too. At, yeah, yeah, they're right there. But like they're look, look for them. Looking at that, the it looks like the bottom three there uh, in the wind column, the three Chevys that are in there, uh, which, you know, those are those are probably the three best Chevy drivers out there. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry to Kyle Larson and Jimmy Johnson, it's just not there so far this year. Uh, William Byron, though, it still surprises me he's up in 12th uh, with, you know, you can tell that Canals is more going for the stage points rather than the finishing, because with the finishes, they... It's been very uh, up and down, just to say the least. No, he'll uh, be in the top ten soon. He'll be in the top ten in points very soon. I think he just wants to play it safe and go the consistent route. But then again, like you only need a win to get in. So, I mean, but then again, you don't want to risk those points. So yeah, and then looking, uh, you know, Eric Jones being sixteenth man. I, I know he's had some problems that aren't of his making, but still, you know, being it, in a Gibbs car, you're down sixteenth in points. Ryan Newman in a in a Roush car getting you know close to you that is is tough and really quick uh jason Ooh. straight th thank you for the ten dollar super chat uh he says i was at the track and loved the race even before the final caution strategy over strategy overachieving teams how about roush and 50 plus lap cat and mouse game between logano and kb uh i guess he had to be there and i think that's probably that that's such a, yeah. a big difference here i'll um put it on me really quick and then we can go back to the points for a second um I think that, that that's something that's such a huge difference. I think with NASCAR compared to any other sport is like any other sport. So like the NFL or, or NBA, uh, if you just want a quick comparison, it it's it's easy to to see if it's a good game or not because most of the action is on screen. Where it's like with these races, um, you know, I remember Chicago and people were like, well, the you know the finish was great, but the race before it isn't that good. Well, it's like no, like. You know, if you looked around the track, there's plenty of passing last year uh, with Chicago and plenty of that. It, it's just a matter of being there. So um, I'll take your word for it that it was probably better than I thought it was uh, based just on being there. Uh, it's just that, that again, just falls on the TV guys. You know, they got to keep stepping their game up. I know it's NBC is better than Fox for the most part, but man, that, you know, there's just so much that that's going on. You know, they, 
I don't know. I don't know the, the definitive answer, to be honest. But uh, really quick, if there's anything else, Darian, you want to go over with the uh, the points here? Any Anything that's sticking out to you? Oh, there's a lot that's sticking out. Eric Jones being in 16th, it's been a bad season for him. I mean, just the fact that a Joe Gibbs car is – might not make the playoffs just considering how good the other uh, um, the other teams have been um i mean kyle bush truex and and hamlin are inside the top five and eric jones is slipping back in 16th and then daniel suarez too i was giving him praise for most of the season he was looking like he was gonna solve he was gonna solve solidly be in the point standings being the in the playoffs there um, but now he's fallen back at, you know, these past two weeks. And, you know, I saw someone in chat like, oh, is it playoffs or, or bust for, for Daniel Suarez? Absolutely. I said that during the offseason when this was first announced. It absolutely is. And, it, you know, there should be no excuse to not make a 16-man playoff system in, you know, driving for Stuart Haas Racing. I know Stuart Haas has had – you could say, I guess, their struggles. I mean, Harvick's currently ninth, but – He's been very consistent, even though he hasn't won. He's going to make it in on points. And Eric Almarola is sort of underachieved a bit. I, I honestly expected a little bit more from him, but he's still putting in the work. He's still top 10 in points. Um, so, yeah, if you look at just the regular season standings, Harvick's third, Almarola's 10th, Boyer's 14th, and then you have Suarez in 18th. So, See, uh, that, I mean, that's the thing you, you point out there that Harvick is third, and you know, to to be honest, you know, we everyone's you know, granted he's way behind Joey Logano and Kyle Busch, but it just shows that Harvick's bad season now with being an SHR is a season that I'm pretty sure any, everyone from Brad Keselowski on down would would love to be having. You it know, it sort of reminds me of Jeff Gordon 2002 when they said he was having a bad season, and but like and he, he was won, in the midst of the championship battle for most. Yeah, of the year. he won three races, and I think he finished fourth or, or third in the points. He he got a top five points finish, so like it really wasn't a bad season i mean it's pretty bad by comparison i guess you could say but being third in the points and that's not bad but then everyone always looks at the playoff points and they're like well he's ninth right now you know so but i mean you know it it is what it is and i also saw i also see cito in chat like oh who's 15th oh it looks like we have a tie there too i didn't realize that so clint boyer and jimmy johnson are tied for 14th it looks like and jimmy johnson's another one too he Sort of, he's been falling back a little bit too. Um, he's um, was coming off back to back top five finishes, and unfortunately, um, he got he uh, got loose on his own there um, uh, during the Kentucky race. But you know what? I still say he'll still point his way in. I don't see that team really falling back. I mean, just looking at the other Hendrick teams, if they can stick it out and if they can make it in, then so I can don't John. know, man. John, see, th- that's the thing is is if say Suarez, you know, he has a great car. If Suarez does win then that right there moves that bubble from Jim, uh, to Jimmy Johnson being that last car in. Um, mm-hmm. And from there, I could totally, I could still, with how Eric Jones has done, could totally see Eric Jones uh, leapfrogging Jimmy Johnson for a spot. I don't know about Clint Boyer. He's, you know, nah. one good race. I don't think a race is the fact that he's been so uh, uh, sliding, I guess is the word. Um but it, it just, it's a matter of, and then Newman, I mean, Johnson has a bad race or two and Newman just keeps on keeping on in that 11th to 15th range. And Newman right there could point his way in over him. I, I don't think Johnson is safe by any margin. Had this been a few weeks ago, I'd say yes, but 10 points, you know, that's, that's one stage win. Uh, yeah, it, it, certainly it, not safe. Yeah. He's certainly not safe though. I, I, I mean, I, I do think though that he can still, you know, widen the margin. You know what I mean? I feel oh, like he can find the margins. So. Yes, he definitely can, but it's a matter of uh, it's for me. It's just a matter of you know, this isn't the Jimmy Johnson that we're used to seeing. This is the, you know, this isn't Jimmy Johnson with Chad Knauss. We don't know if he's going to turn it on. If anything, it could be like sort of how you know Dale Jr. and Casey Kane used to be at Hendrick, where there's a fall off at the last half of the season compared to the other Hendrick cars. Uh, yeah, certainly can't have a fall off this time of year. I certainly would say of anyone in the top 16 right now, I think Jimmy Johnson, the only person that should be more scared of falling out right now and have and sweating more bullets than Jimmy Johnson should be the guy he's tied with, Clint Boyer. You know, Eric mm-hmm. Jones does just enough, it seems like, and I think he, he can keep that up. Uh, but, man, I Clint Boyer right now, it's like everything that can go wrong has. And, again, one good week that, that has basically been an anomaly at this point. Uh, compared to to looking at you know the rest of these guys who are so up and down. 
And also another guy we failed to mention, Kyle Larson. What the hell has happened? Like, just I mean, like he's. He, I mean, I know um, the beginning of the season was a lot worse, but still, like I mean, Kyle Larson. Like now he's a guy that I expect to be in the top ten every single race. And yeah, sure, he won the All Star race, but I mean, that doesn't really amount. It doesn't really count for much in the grand scheme of things. Number one and number two, although he's been consistent enough to get back into the playoff hunt. Uh, again, this playoff system promotes mediocrity. Like, you don't have to be good. So Kyle Larson's pretty much doing the bare minimum, it seems like, to barely make it in. And, you know, it. and then what makes it even worse is Kurt Busch just won. So Kurt Busch is officially the number one driver over at, at Chip Ganassi Racing. Like, I mean, there's no debate about that anymore. I mean, just look at the regular season standings. He's currently tied for six in the standings, and Larson's currently 13th. And also, Jarrett... You've been keeping track of a playoff or of of, uh, of um, your own point system yourself. If we had the Winston Cup standings, Kyle Larson would be 18th right now. Yeah, let me let me pull that up if my phone will ever uh, get up right. to date. Yeah, so I mean, I'm looking at it. Oh crap! Yeah, uh, I don't have a, a share screen, but I'll just read it really quick here. Um, so basically, like Kyle Busch would have a huge, huge lead over uh, Logano, but Kurt Busch would be fourth. Uh, guys like Alex Bowman and, and Eric Amarola would close out the top 10. Jimmy Johnson and Ryan Newman, 11th, 12th. Uh, Eric Jones, 13th. William Byron, 14th. Clint Boyer, 15th. Uh, but yeah, looking down this list, Kyle Larson would be in the 18th spot right now. Uh, and, you know, I don't know because, again, we only showed the top 20 on the racing reference sheet there. But uh, Chris Busher, if we used Winston just based off finishes alone, uh, Chris Busher would be actually closing in over the last few weeks on Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Paul Menard, uh, and he's ahead of Austin Dillon, Daniel Hemmert, Ty Dillon. You know, lot, cars that cars that with his caliber of ride, he should not be competing with. Because I, I really don't think that JTG is is as good as a lot of people mm-hmm. think. I mean, you look at, at Ryan Priest; he's right down there with Corey LaJoy and Matt Benedetto. No disrespect to them, but. It's either not the greatest drivers, not the greatest equipment, both, whatever it may be. Um, so Chris Busher, man, I give him props. He is the, that sleeper of the year. You know, I think he'll score a few more top tens this year, and I, I just hope that sponsorship can jump on with him if he decides to leave JTG and we can see him in a competitive ride. I would love to see – if he's doing this with JTG, imagine what he could do with how Roush has been. Roush mm-hmm. is, is a, a good step or two above JTG in my opinion. Uh, imagine how he could do with a Roush or a Ganassi or whatever other team. So Chris Busher, man, he, he deserves a lot more props than he's getting right now. What he's, do you, an what do you think? he's an overachiever, man. Everyone's been saying that all year. Um, I mean, even in his Xfinity career, he sort of came out of nowhere, I guess. Uh, He won one race in 2014 at, at, I think it was mid-Ohio, and then everyone was just shocked by that. Like, oh, Chris Buescher's good at road courses? Who would have known? Like, where'd he come from? And then the next year, he wins the championship. And, you know, unfortunately, Roush didn't have rides at the time, so he had to go to friggin' to front row motorsports and... He does have a win, but, you know, it's a lucky win, unfortunately. So doesn't really get all uh, much credit for that. But I don't know. If, if I were Roush Racing, I'd honestly just kick Stenhouse to the curb. Uh, like, honestly, like, I don't mean, just the way he's been performing. And, like, you know, he had that one fluke year, which, I mean, hell, I'll even compare Stenhouse, really. His career is sort of turning out, I guess you could say, like, an off-brand version of Derek Copes, to be honest with you. Like, I'm just talking about Cup Series career just because, you know, um, wins his two races – and then, and you know, in one season, and then proceeds to do nothing the rest of his career. Like, and those two wins are plate wins. And then, ever since he's won, I mean, he's just done all these like bonehead moves at plate tracks. And then, like, and then he doesn't even make up for it on you know the short tracks and the and the uh, intermediate tracks as well. Um, so I'd honestly kick him to the curb for Chris Buescher. Chris Buescher, if he if he got a Roush ride, he could point his way into the playoffs now. Barely, yeah, he probably would barely point his way into the playoffs, but I, I would love to see Chris Busher in the 17 ride someday. Definitely, and uh, you know, moving a little differently off of uh, what we've seen this past week uh, with the racing, I I was looking today at some some stuff, and I didn't realize that Kurt Busch's win is the third in a row for Chevy. You know, you got Alex Bowman, uh, Justin Haley, and now Kurt. Uh, the last time that Team Chevy won three races in a row is 2015. 
And wow. people might not. I, I was at one of those races uh, at Martinsville that year. Uh, so at Martinsville, Jeff Gordon won. Uh, okay. At Texas, Jimmy Johnson won. And then at Phoenix in 2015, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s last win. Uh, so, one, that's really crazy to think about. You know, growing up, you know, and, and watching in the mid and early 2000s, it, you had to go through Chevy for the most part from like, you know, basically when I was seven on to like two years ago. Uh, you had in one year Chevy winning, or Hendrick, I should say, Hendrick winning 18 of the 36 races. Uh, so it, I guess it just shows how far Chevy's gone, but the fact that, Hey, you know, whether it be luck and good performances with Alex Bowman and Kurt Busch, uh, they're getting, they're getting themselves back into position to win more. Uh, so I guess Darian, what are your thoughts on that, man? It's crazy. Yeah. When I was growing up, man, you had to go through like, Hen you know, the Chevy teams, you know, RCR, um, Hendrick, uh, DEI. DEI. Yeah, DEI too. You know, sometimes Michael Waltrip would show up. Now it it wouldn't be all just Junior at times, but um, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, it's it's really good to see him back in the fold of things with that. Um, I mean, damn, like I would have thought even in 2016 they would have done that, but damn, 2015, wow. And those names you um you said they don't even like some of those guys don't even race in the in NASCAR anymore. So, I mean, this could be a telltale sign of things to come in uh, during the playoffs too. I mean, they're starting to get their their program up and running. Um, just in time, um, once playoff season begins to heat up and then, you know, for uh, 2020 and beyond too, I mean, you're, um, you already have your, your, your very young stable of prospects and drivers right now, you know, Chase Elliott's, uh, ready to take over. And so is Alex Bowman and William Byron as well. Um, and you look at some other Chevy teams too. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I know RCR has been struggling this year, but I still see some potential there, you know, with, uh, Tyler Reddick. Uh, if they're able to start a third team with him, he's been performing very well um, over there with their program. Um, so, yeah, like right now, um, I don't know, like good things are in the works for uh, for Chevy right now. Um, I know they got some other smaller teams um, that they're still trying to work with, like, you know, JTG. You know, they're, I mean, slightly under, I mean, they're underperforming, but like, again, it's JTG. Like, I don't really expect much from them anyways and then also chip ganassi racing too um i mean kurt bush you know just doing his thing and uh, kyle larson he's still up there but you know not up there where he should be um so yeah there's a lot of potential here too and then if you want to look in deeper you know to like maybe i don't know the knn series you know it, you know those lower ranks um you know you got some other prospects uh sam meyer is looking pretty good i like him a lot um and then maybe you can also maybe snatch up a few potential prospects too, you know, like a few from Ford or a few from Toyota in the future too. If like, because Toyota is currently overflowing with talent. That's their yeah. whole problem too. So like eventually like, you know, some of that talent's going to spew out well, uh, to these other manufacturers. Well, for me, uh, Toyota, like for me as a Cubs fan, I, I like to make this uh, comparison here. Toyota has what the Chicago Cubs have had the last couple of years uh, is that, they have an abundant overabundance of talent so you, you have to get rid of some of that good talent to get you know to make yeah. room for people growing and toyota's had that problem now the last couple of years i i wouldn't be surprised if maybe you know of the the people that have been racing from like last year to, through the next two or three years if toyota loses a few of those guys to uh guys or gals to chevy uh or ford you know it, it it's a matter it's a matter of of they design their program too good, I guess, if you could say, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, it's weird to say that, but they've had so many people coming up through the ranks that once you have that bottleneck, uh, and I don't think it's even, um, this isn't even a mention of the four car rule. Uh, it's none of that. It's just when you go higher and higher up, less and less people can make it. You know, there's oh, only, yeah. there's only going to be as many as, you know, between probably 36 and 40 guys in cup each week. You know, oh, yeah. and, and most a good 30 of those rides are set each year. Uh, and, and the other ones, there's the, you get even smaller than the 10 that are probably open. You get even smaller with the competitive rides that are still open. Um, and, and the same goes for Xfinity and the same goes for Truck Series. Truck Series is probably, you know, even more difficult, I'd say, than Xfinity to get into because there's less and less competitive teams each year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're having to, it, it's a cutthroat field out there. Uh, so yeah, I mean Chevy, Chevy needs to work on their own program first, um, and maybe they could get some of these people and work them on their way up. Yeah, you know, they got good teams. Uh, RCR has shown great speed in Xfinity. 
JRM, you know, they're they're always th- them being bad is like running seventh. You know, if yeah. you're if you're not running top five or being competitive in a JRM car, the bad day. Yeah, you're not gonna last there very long. Um, so they got good teams to build up on. Yeah, I guess it's just a matter of if Chevy and you know Ford to a degree can put in that money and that time to to build up something like that the way that Toyota has. Toyota's got the head start. They they brought the future with with how they're doing theirs. It's time for the other manufacturers and whoever may jump in to catch up to them. Yeah, um, it's just funny to me that Toyota uh, that you know Toyota could be responsible for some of the superstars we have in the Cup Series in the next ten to fifteen years, and they might not even drive a single Cup race for Toyota. That's how talented they are. So they could be in Ford, they could be in Chevy. That's that's crazy to think about there. So and, uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like eventually Toy, um, um, <clears throat> Toyota is going to be like, okay, well, we have to pick out these guys. Like, oh, I don't want to get. I don't. I um. I don't know. We don't have enough room for some of y'all and stuff. So we're just going to cut you guys off here and then we're going to keep some of these drivers. And then I don't know, some of you guys can go wherever, you know? Uh, and then real quick, uh, I saw Evan, you put in the chat, uh, did I see the Kenseth wrecking Lugano? Yes. And it was awesome. I got to actually, <laughs> it, I'm not going to get in that right now because I'm, I'd go off on a tangent of how awesome that day was. That was pretty funny. Was pretty funny. Oh, it was, <laughs> it was awesome. It was so fun. Uh, okay. So, Looking at some other Kentucky news uh, from the Cup Series, there's there's even more. Uh, believe it or not, Kentucky was an actually interesting weekend. That was yeah, that's weird. Hell? It might have not been the greatest. It might not have been the greatest racing, but it was an interesting weekend. Um, the TV ratings now, now interesting but not good. Uh, one point two TV rating down from a one point three, and this is the first comparable, really comparable weekend with ratings um i I just got i gotta say i'm i'm really hoping that this there may be the losses are just point one losses because that's i i I know that it's kentucky and and all that but you you see those two weekends of rain delays had to have had some impact on the uh on on the ratings moving forward some of the people dropping off hopefully it'll bounce back but I mean, you're looking; these next six weeks are on NBCSN, and I was saying before that that's the last test for me. Mm-hmm. If they can get them to increase on the sports network rather than the main broadcast network, uh, I would think that'd be, be great. It would show that it's not just a, an early spring fad that people are doing. Um, but it, it does worry me a little bit. If I think if we see losses the next couple weeks leading up to the playoffs in Bristol and so on and so forth. Uh, I think it is reason to say that the the increases we saw at the start of the season would be an anomaly, but it's still I think it's too early to tell. We got to have two or three more races to to show a trend rather than just a a one off comparable race. But I don't know, Darian, what are your thoughts on the the TV ratings trending downwards this past week? Well, the rain delay certainly had some effect on it, but um, I don't know. Going into Kentucky, I was expecting the ratings to be down like somewhat, but I don't know. I, I was expecting maybe like a, a 1.0 or like a 1.1 TV rating. I mean, for it to just be down one, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, obviously you don't want the ratings to go down, but I'd say eh, it's not, I don't know. I wouldn't really look at that as a, a major issue. You know I mean? Just like so far this season we've had so much good, so much positivity when it comes to TV ratings right now, man. Like, you know, uh, races flatlining or, you know, increasing by, and then some by, by a large sum as well. Um, the, the only increase we had this weekend though, the truck series race was apparently up. I think it was around 20%. It was up. I don't like, I'll, I'll go look on Adam Stern's Twitter right now, but that's the last time I yeah, saw sounds... it. Truck race. No, I mean, no, it was like, it was a, it was some big increase. Hold on. Let me look it up really quick. Well, I, I think part of that probably, you know, I, I, did, I only saw the cup one, uh, but I would think part of that maybe was there was some rain or some weather influence last year, or just the fact that when you have when you have a smaller crowd, it it would be easier to have bigger gains, you know. So like mm-hmm. a twenty percent increase of something like say say two hundred thousand people watch, a twenty percent increase means that now two hundred forty thousand people. Watch. Oh yeah, it was a, it was up twenty three percent. So like it, um uh, the race earned three thousand three hundred and thirty three viewers, and last year's 3, race like two hundred. Or no, I'm sorry, 300,000. Okay. Sorry about that. 300,000, 333,000 viewers, and then 270,000 
uh, compared to last year, uh, was uh, last year's deal. But yeah, if man, we're having three thousand, man, we yeah, if no, we're having three thousand, we need to stop uh, messing yeah, with the IndyCar fans. Yeah, I know, man. Holy crap! Yeah, we shouldn't. We're not even an IndyCar's company there. But yeah, three hundred thousand, over three hundred thousand tuned into the race, and um, I mean, even that race, like, I'm surprised by that because even that race wasn't like there was nothing really special going on about it you know i mean other than like the hat toss which we'll talk about um up oh, to the that winner. Point, oh yeah well i mean up to that point it was looking like it was you know brett moffitt was um just running away with it but then he ran out of gas and then with a, with around two laps to go then tyler ankrum um was a um he's another good story too because he um couldn't run uh, full time with uh crosley racing anymore due to sponsorship and he's been um trying to put together some some uh some fill-in rides for the rides he he doesn't have um and he won a race too and now he's in the playoffs and well, that essentially kicks out both kbm trucks as well too in the process that's crazy that's uh, they're just having a bad season i'm, I'm about to do a bad season's kbm after this uh, once the season's wrapped up but i don't know i'm just very surprised by that um i, I don't know i can't really explain it though i don't know why the ratings went up for kentucky for a, a truck race at kentucky all of a sudden i well, really quick about Tyler Ingram. Uh, one of the interesting things I saw, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't it say that uh, he was the first driver in the top three series to win a race that was born after 2000? He was, yes. That Crazy. scares me because then I'm realizing that those people that were really annoying and uh, like the annoying freshmen when I was a senior, like they could be a NASCAR driver. <laughs> yeah, they could, man. They could be like, ah, I got you, I got you. That's used to make fun of me back in the day, but yeah, that's weird. That's crazy. No, that's crazy, man. Going into the future. Going into the future, man. Yep. Uh, um, I, you don't call them millennials, do you? You just call them, like, what, Gen Z or something Gen like that? Gen Z. Well, we're Gen Z. Uh, okay, no, no, we're Gen Z. So then what are they? They're Gen Z also. Uh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. 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 Gen, so, yeah, the whole deal goes with that is, like, Gen Z is from, like, I think, 96 on. Millennials is, like, b- before that. I'm glad. I just don't want to be a millennial. Uh, yeah. Thank God. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean – it's definitely a good story uh to see and it really shows though with the kbm trucks being out it's like like kyle bush said if you're not winning a kbm truck you're doing it wrong uh it is tough because those two guys you know they they really seem like good guys but they're just they're not cutting it in supreme equipment like that you know people gave well people gave noah gregson a lot of crap for not doing well with kbm but at least he won yeah they're giving him crap now and then gregson last year made the final four but it's funny though yeah, I know. It's funny, though, because when you watch Harrison Burton run in the Xfinity series, he's very good. I feel like with him, I think it's more so him just not filling these, you know, these trucks as he does the the Xfinity cars. Like, I mean, I saw him um, run the 18 car at, at, at Iowa Speedway, and he was pretty good. He was running inside the top five, obviously the top ten for all, for all of the race. If you're running Joe Gibbs equipment in the Xfinity series, you better be inside the top ten, you know, mm, at the Dan- bare minimum. Danny and- put in the chat, he's a millennial. So Danny will be on soon. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Yeah, he'll be on soon, and so will Eric. He'll be on as well. But, uh, you know, that's the thing. Like, I feel like with him, it's just more so maybe not filling out these trucks, you know, I think. And then also with Todd Gillen, like, the thing is, though, his situation is different because last year uh, he should have had two wins last year. Um, but then he got snake bitten out of all those. And the funny thing is Justin Haley went on to win both of those races. So <laughs> Justin Haley's like officially the, the luckiest driver in NASCAR history right now. Um, it well, currently, matter, currently in NASCAR right now, but it, it doesn't matter on the stat sheet. As long as you got a W, yeah, W exactly. is a W. Exactly. But you know, so heading into this season, I expect, I was expecting Todd Gillen to be, a final four contender you know i honestly if you ask me like heading into you know like up to this point how many wins he would have had i would have said like two maybe three wins so far in the truck series this year but man he just hasn't cut it yet and you know but and then it doesn't help when guys like chandler smith are coming in and winning the pole in their debuts and then also um um you know also running you know running for race wins and arca right now just making their case like it doesn't doesn't really help i mean and then again also greg biffle winning in his only start this season too that and one, that yeah. was that was, yeah that was in a race where todd gillen was leading but got loose and crashed his truck um and also harrison burton was out of that race as well so i don't know what the deal is um i i mean i wouldn't be surprised if they were both out of the ride out of KBM after this season. Um, I, I guess you, I guess I could say Burton would surprise me a little bit, 
but I wouldn't be surprised if Todd was just kicked to the curb. Yeah, and that, that's a tough deal because I, I honestly thought that uh, Todd Yolen, you know, I thought he had a lot of talent from what I'd seen before. You know, I, again, I'd been a very small sample size. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, that the Toyota development bull, man, it got a that's, lot. Yeah. It's like, Hey, you better perform now or well, we're just going to yeah. get you out, dude. Like, I mean, <laughs> that, that's, that's the thing, you know, if you, if you don't perform, there's always somebody down the pipe that's younger, uh, or t- more talented or whatever. Uh, somebody always breathing down your neck. Uh, mm-hmm. it's kind of, it's kind of like my grandpa says, you have to be aggressive, stay aggressive, you know, about anything, you know, that you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the same thing with these guys. You know, I, I don't see that aggression that i would see even i don't know even even though they ripped on out of noah gregson you know out of christopher bell good. i mean he was really aggressive though dude i mean he was yeah. really good though. um but so yeah that i guess that's the sort crazy of... thing is he's they're not the only young drivers underperforming let's pull up the truck standings right now so we're 13 yeah, you... races in i'll pull it up right now yeah, um i'll it. share screen right now um oh wow yeah there's a lot of underperforming going on here okay so let's uh oh you got a super chat Oh, let me let me see. Uh, uh, Corvette Racing forty eight. Thank you so much for the three ninety nine super chat. It says Burton will probably replace Bell next year. I could see that. I could yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of uh, I guess if they sign that, the the right person up. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what are these standings look like? So let me. So let's take a look at some of these. So um, they don't have the playoff standings up for some reason, but uh, right now Grand and figures just he's just running a, running a, away with it right now, but. You look at the first four, and they're all veterans. Um, then you start to get into the young guys. Uh, Harrison Burton, even though he's fifth in the regular season points, he's outside. All of these guys are outside because Tyler Ankrum and uh, Ross Chastain have won races. So Ben Rose has also underperformed a little bit this year. He hasn't been doing as well as I hoped. Um, we already talked about Gil- uh, Gilliland. And then uh, Sheldon Cree, too, man. That's another driver who I was really high on this year, too, to, to perform, man, to be inside, um, you know, the, the championship or uh, the playoff eight. Uh, and he's just underperformed as well. I don't know what's going on with some of these guys. And then, um, yeah, yeah, so that's that's just about it. And also, uh, shout out to Jordan Anderson, currently 15th in the standings. Former podcast guest, so oh, yeah. he's having a we, good year. So we love Jordan that. Anderson, man. Yeah, that, we that love He's him, a good man. dude. Yeah, we love him, man. So I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's up with these uh, these uh, um, young drivers just not performing because I mean the rides seem to be there. They seem to have some of these uh, ride, you know, these top rides locked down. And I see someone in the chats like Sheldon Creed is a bust. I wouldn't say that yet. I mean, he was the ARCA champion, and I know it's ARCA. I know, I know, but like you know, he definitely proved his worth in that series, um, winning all those races and scoring all of those top fives and top tens. Um, I, I don't know. I'd say give him one, uh, just one more year before we uh, judge him and stuff. But I, I, I don't know. It's um, it's very unfortunate too because I mean these are some of these young drivers who we're currently you know talking about and who you know we're you know looking at as you know the future of the sport. But when you're getting beat out by a fifty something year old Greg Biffle who hasn't raced at NASCAR in God knows how long. Ooh, I, I know you're, you know, these are the guys you, that were hyping up and stuff, but I mean, there's so many more down the line too that I don't, I, I think for the first time in a while, um, granted much different circumstances though, we, we don't have to, to worry as much about those talented guys coming up. I mean, there's so many people in, in all these different series. I mean, uh, heck there's even one of them we got coming on next weekend. Oh we got God, Eric he's Eastep. Back. He's here. I'm back. Everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I, I can't see the chat, unfortunately. I just realized I have this set up wrong, but good to see everyone again. I'm sorry I've been MIA the last two weeks, and I'm, I'm still MIA. I'm at, a, I'm at a, my friend's 21st birthday party, so uh, That's a nice yeah, how's it going, y'all? What y'all talking about? Uh, young guys in the truck series. Underperforming. Uh, oh, yeah. Are we talking about uh, the KBM dudes? KBM and a yeah. uh, few, few others and here and there. Yeah, all those, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Y'all, y'all, my two cents. They're they're struggling. That's I'm sure that's what you guys said. They don't, it doesn't look good for them right now with Ankrum winning. Doesn't mm-hmm. that knock everyone down another notch? Because yep. I know yep, like Crafton's had some issues. So like Harrison Harrison's pretty close to making it in, but he's I don't know. He's lagging behind just because Chastain winning and Ankrum winning. So that's that's gonna make it hard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really quick. Uh, there's a super chat from uh, how do I how do I say your name? Uh, with weariest, Fe- weariest fever 65. Uh, thanks for the 199 super chat. Says, How about uh, the company man video? Great, I thought. Yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, we just want to 
close up on uh, this topic. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it, I I think we pretty much covered. We kind of it's just tough the, the way it is right now because we were saying how with how they um, Toyota has structured their development program, there's so many more people that are right there that are you know if they don't perform, will take those rides. Especially with someone as as competitive as KBM. Uh, that won't hesitate to take that ride. Uh, so. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I feel like Chandler Smith will probably be in the four uh, sometime in the future. Um, I don't know about next year full time. Like, I don't think he's of age yet. That's the thing. Like, I, the age limit thing and all that. So, and also you have some other guys in K and N coming up. Um, Derek Krause is pretty good. Um, also obviously Haley Jenkins um in the in the discussion for that as well. So, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, and then really quick, talking about another young driver who has been struggling recently, Natalie Decker. Uh, is, <laughs> she's in the news again. Uh, it, it, to be fair, though, I would be completely fair about it. It was not her fault. No, it wasn't I, her fault. I, I feel so bad for her because it wasn't. And I, I I, don't think I'd react the same way, but I'd be just as mad if, if that <laughs> happened to me. Uh, Darren, you want to run down? Uh, what, what did Natalie do this week? Oh my gosh! Hold up. You know what? You know what we need, Chat. We need a play-by-play -play right now. Let me pull up the video. Play-by-play <laughs> -play -play of what happened here. This was the. This has to be one of the funniest videos I have ever seen from NASCAR. We should each, like NASCAR we should each give our reaction or our reenaction of it. But everyone just spiked their hats on the ground. Uh, yeah, like on you know, the count of three. Yeah, I already did my reenaction of it, man. <laughs> that went yeah. pretty viral on Twitter. There. All right, hold on. I'm about that to share. Something. All right, so let's do the uh, the little play-by-play -play here. Okay, so Natalie's pretty pissed. Oh, hold up. So she's pretty pissed right here, uh, saying, like, oh, what the hell did you do? Yada, yada, yada. And then, wham, just freaking, freaking slams the hat right there on the ground. And then the dude's like, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough there. So, yeah, that's what um, that's um, what happened there. But I don't know, just that was so cringy. That's one of the cringiest things I've ever seen. Like, what made it worse was this. It wasn't the hat toss. Like, she freaking threw it, and then she looked back. She looked all the way back at him, too. Like, you know, gave him a little uh, snake eye there. So, like, that was just one of the most cringiest um, um, moments in NASCAR history there. But Spencer Boyd, um, he um, made it into a positive situation because he's uh, currently selling T-shirts of the flip hat. You can go on his website and buy them. They are only 20 bucks. I all I, I got mine already. So, um, but, yeah, um, that was Spencer Boyd's fault, though. But still, Decker, um, wow. Uh, I want to say, what is that, that now? 11 starts and 10 wrecks. So yeah. 10 wrecks and 11 starts, unfortunately. So it's not bad. It's not making me look any better, too, uh, compared to last year. But thankfully, I put out a little video saying, like, yeah, nice guy. I was wrong. So <laughs> I don't look as bad there. But, oh, oh man. I don't I don't know what the deal is, though. Um, I mean, she's cute. She keeps bringing in. Uh, she keeps bringing in the money, though. So she's uh, here to stay, I guess, until well, further notice. To, to be fair, I, like like I said before, I I don't blame her for being mad. Yeah, like, we don't she blame got her. Taken the, way out. the way you did it, though, like well, you still. I don't like, care how she did it. I either way, I thought it was funny, but it's yeah. just <laughs> it's just a matter of like she that she can't catch a break, man. Like and even at Chicagoland, like she was running in the top 10 and then got taken out. She still managed to get back up in the top 15, but it was just one of those deals where it's like if if she's not losing the car or the truck on her own, somebody is doing it for her when she's running well. Like it, it's it's like the the Jekyll and Hyde every race for her. It, it's it sucks. Yeah. Um I I don't know. I don't know like and the real question is what's going to happen to her at, her after 2019 cuz I'm assuming She's not gonna have that that money forever, right? And I'm assuming that even if she did, I don't know if they would have her back. You know, I yeah, I guess we just gotta wait and see on that one. That's uh, yeah. it's just a matter of uh, brand loyalty in that regard. Yeah, just the whole team has struggled as a whole, to be honest with you. Um, um, even um, what's his name? He drives the 15 truck too. Um, Alfredo, that's his last name, Alfredo or Fernando Alfredo. I, I can't. Anthony I can't, Alfredo. I, yeah, Anthony Alfredo. Yeah, I was like, wait, yeah. like, is it, is it the other way around? I don't know. Like, he hasn't really been doing all that well this season as well. And then outside of uh, Tyler Ankrum's one win, I mean, that's about like there's not really much, um, much positive events going on for that team. So, hey, but, you yeah. never know. Christopher Bell's probably going to be in the Cup Series this year. Decker to the twenty. <laughs> that could be that could be how far we'll see really how far money takes you that yeah. would be a real black eye if that happened that would oh. be 
that would be such a such a NASCAR thing to happen. If that happens, oh god, it'd be such a NASCAR thing to happen. Man. I can imagine that'd Twitter. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be like equivalent though to like furniture or racing shutting down, but like it'd be the opposite effect, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I can just, like, I can just yeah. imagine Twitter because it would just it'd be like that scene in Lord of the Rings where they're going down the mountain, except it's all the White Knights. Like, oh, Jesus. like yeah. I, I like no matter even, even though I was like defending her, they're like she doesn't deserve to go with the Xfinity. She yeah. should go down another year. We've won down this road before, but man, oh, I the sad thing is is that the way it's structured, I can see her getting moved up just because of the sponsorship. Oh and yeah, that, no, yeah. I can see. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me there. Oh. Uh, I guess we can move on really quick. Eric, you'll like this one. I put I put something in the main uh, podcast chat about it earlier. Uh, John Krasinski said that the the moment that defined his growth as an actor was with Matt Kenseth and getting him to participate in that commercial. So I want to know from the Kenseth fan, uh, what what do you think about that? Well, I'm an Office fan too, you know. So that was I, I remember hearing about that. I never I didn't I could never find the clip though. So I don't know if that clip was new or if I just didn't know what to search before. But when I saw I'd heard John Krasinski say before that he did a commercial with Matt Kenseth, but I didn't hear all of that. But yeah, the clip he basically said like you know, he was a young actor or whatever and he was in a commercial with Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth very stale face, very, very blank. Apparently Matt Kenseth in the commercial wasn't like he, he wasn't supposed to talk. It was just John Krasinski being goofy. Uh, for those of you who don't know who John Krasinski is, he plays Jim in the office or played Jim in the office. Uh, and he's in a bunch of other stuff now. But uh but I, I it was interesting to hear him say like he as as he was doing the commercial and I guess he was funny enough, Matt Kenseth eventually came around and was like, Hey, can I speak and have like a part in this scene or something? And that was like the first moment that he kind of realized, oh shoot, I can really like have an impact at acting. Like I changed this guy's whole perception just because of how I was acting and stuff. And that was a hilarious stuff. I don't. That looked like a pretty recent clip to him talking about that. It was just weird to hear such a mainstream celebrity mention Matt Kenseth and remember something from like yeah, I don't know, probably like 2002 or 2003. 2002, like that's, yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty pretty crazy, but. I don't know. I thought it was really cute. I thought it was really fun. <laughs> it's funny. He's not the only actor who's been in NASCAR commercials to go on and have some sort of mainstream success. Um, I can't remember his name, but um, the one guy from The Hangover who lost his tooth, he was in oh, um, yeah. a Budweiser commercial um, in uh, way back in like 2000, 2001, something like that. And um, uh, Stephen Colbert, uh, the TV host, he was in um, a, a, a GM Goodrich commercial with uh, Kevin Harvick there. So... I don't know. I don't know. What's um, I guess like maybe that's you know NASCAR's mainstream success rubbing off on them now. I guess you could say you know back in the day. I don't know, but I don't know. That's uh, it's pretty cool though. Well, pretty cool. He uh, mentioned NASCAR that way too. As well. well, and I I'd, I'd never seen the commercial before because it was just before I'd started watching, and uh, man, I laughed my ass off watching it. I thought it was a funny like because yeah. it wasn't one of those commercial. You know, it wasn't like a lot of those commercials where it's like super pandering and you can tell it's all of its forced and stuff you could tell he was ad-libbing that whole thing and yeah and i could totally i could totally like see if they put a camera on the other side of kenseth when his head was like away from him of him probably just like trying to hold back grinning and laughing at him because it was, it was so funny. funny but at the same time it was so annoying too like i, I watched the full two minute commercial there i'm like oh my god this fool won't stop talking but then again <laughs> like he did his job right though am i right you know he's supposed yeah. to be a yeah yeah so. Yeah, so props to him, man. Just think, yeah, if it yeah. wasn't if it wasn't for Matt Kenseth, we might not have Jim and Pam, and we might not have a quiet place. I oh, mean, that's yeah. literally the Office is like one of the quintessential like American comedy TV shows of the last two decades or whatever. And if not for Matt freaking Kenseth, <laughs> it may have never been the same. It might have not won all those Emmys, not been a cultural phenomenon or anything. It's all because of Matt freaking Ken Matt freaking Kenseth did that. <laughs> That's so. I mean, by doing nothing, basically, you did that by literally not doing anything. That's amazing. <laughs> so let me get this straight. So Matt Kenseth has uh, um, a uh, a Winston Cup Series championship. So he also is responsible for all of those Emmys. How many Emmys did they end up winning? I have no idea. Probably a dozen. I have no. So I don't know. He technically has thirteen championships. Then. <laughs> I guess. <Yeah>. You could say. <laughs> if it wasn't for Kenseth, he wouldn't be on there. So Matt Kenseth is a thirteen-time champion. I don't know. Matt. An Emmy, an Emmy Award winner. Yes, that's yes. Matt, <laughs> Matt Kenseth is the glue that holds all the cultural significance of The Office together. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, really quick, going also on to a bit of uh, on-screen news for NASCAR. Blink of an Eye, the documentary movie made about Michael Waltrip about the 2001 Daytona 500 based on the book, uh, is set to come out in theaters and streaming services in September. 
Uh, there, I, I gotta say though, I watched that trailer and I was starting to get hyped up, and then I saw that the only person that said anything good about it, like that they could use as a quote, was Dale Jr. Junior. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, that doesn't bode well. As Danny B is in the chat, what Danny B? Well, what do you think about the new uh, Blink of an Eye trailer? Have you seen it yet? Oh no, I actually haven't. I just had a chance to say it. I want to though. Dude, but, that, yeah, the funniest part, dude, yeah, the, like, you just brought it up, dude. Like, they had Junior's quote. Junior said, it's the best movie ever or something like that. I'm like, what? Like, what the heck? Like, I need an actual movie critic to freaking, like, say something. I'll, I'll take their word for it. Not on well, this. Come on I, now. I was just thinking it's like if, if, if it turns out to be a complete dumpster fire of a movie, it'd be like having a trailer for The Room and having Tommy Wiseau go, it's so good. It real movie. It good. It real movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a buzz video on it. It's not that good. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Maybe that was the joke. Know. Maybe they were they were trying to be funny with it. That's what I was assuming, but I don't know. It missed. Oh, I don't. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I it wouldn't surprise me. No, maybe maybe they let the maybe they let Michael Waltrip direct. I was a quite funny but questionable. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. But uh, yeah, it's it's just, <laughs> it's just <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's like. You don't have like you don't show somebody and then like two minutes later just go, it's so good. Well, yeah, you think it's good, you're in it. Yeah, <laughs> like, of course, you're not gonna say I no. What the I mean, you look at my room. This is basically an Earnhardt shrine, but I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna call it here, man. Like, you, come on, it's good. guys. Yeah, it's a good setup right here, man. I think it's a good setup and all that. But come on now, like like stop hyping yourself. Don't hype yourself up, man. But speaking on just the trailer, it looked pretty good because i thought mm -hmm. it was just going to be another one of those oh uh michael walter uh, um once again reliving you know the you know the day you know he won the race and then you know um you know one of his best friends unfortunately passes away in the race um but no it's like tailing back all the way to the very beginning uh, beginnings of his career and then also i was very surprised by this his uh his 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 ex-wife is also in it too and she seems to uh to um to be a, a major role in the in the film as well so i was a little surprised by that um is, uh, is dale jarrett gonna be in the movie uh, no 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 uh, lucky for walter dale jarrett isn't in the movie so <laughs> uh, i'm just gonna leave it at that i'm not gonna yeah. ex expound on that one <laughs> um really quick i just wanted to bring this one up as, as just a funny like one-off thing because i don't think we're gonna have too much of a lightning segment tonight um reddit brought this up and i noticed it too based off a few tweets um he might not, it might not be him, but there's like a burner account for Steve O'Donnell. He's like following this account with like four followers, doesn't follow anybody. And all it does is defend Steve O'Donnell and the higher ups at NASCAR. So uh, it's, it's like, ah, something, something, 59, 59. It's I want to be clear. Might want to be clear. We're not saying it is. We're speculating. Yeah, we're speculating right now. <laughs> but, but um, based on other confirmed bur burner accounts from the past, it's looking likely. Oh yeah, it's looking <laughs> very likely right now. Um, I don't know, just like just looking at that Twitter and just like seeing like some of the uh, the tweets and stuff, it was getting in specific detail about like you know oh just you know defending NASCAR and like some of their procedures and all that stuff. Like one was about lightning. And, and, and like, you know, the whole lightning clock and all that stuff. And I'm like, dude, it doesn't even sound like a fan, like a real fan or like even a boomer too, because even they talk a certain way, even they tweet a certain way. Like it was sounding like someone uh, working in NASCAR, just defending, uh, defending themselves there. It's and probably, also like, it's probably an yeah, underpaid intern. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it is. And also you got a super chat there, buddy. Oh yeah. And I think this one can go towards all of us. Um, it's thank you, Jason straight for the $2 super chat. He asks, Best NASCAR movie. Go. I'll let you guys go. Cause... What's the best NASCAR movie? I'd say probably... Um, oh, I can't think of one thing. One. Um, not Stroker, Days of Thunder. Stroker Ice for me. It's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty accurate and it's pure comedy. Yeah, like it's not Days of Thunder for me, though. Not even close. I'd probably just say Ricky Bobby. I don't know, just because it was funny. You know, Talladega Nights. Yeah. I, Full disclosure: I've never seen Days of Thunder still, so I feel like a total loser. I, I uh, but I, I'm gonna go with. Oh, go ahead. I'll go with Cars. I think okay. Pixar's Cars. Yeah, yeah I, I think I might go with uh, with Cars too. I recent see it was Days of Thunder, and I still like Days of Thunder just because as a movie it's set up pretty well. Um, but man, man, the inaccuracies in that movie. There was like a, there's a scene right where Cole Trickle comes back from like being hurt or something, and he's at Daytona. 
And at one point, it switches to a shot from Phoenix, which was weird. Um, yeah. But he's at Daytona for the Daytona 500. And, like, they show this the, the, the field coming back to green and Dale Earnhardt's leading. And then in the next shot, Ricky Rudd is leading. And then it's, like, he's drafting up towards the front. And there's, like, the villain car, him. And then underneath, there's, um, I believe, Harry Gant's 33 car. And then it switches a shot and they go three wide. And suddenly that green 33 turns into Ricky Rudd's green 26. And then they spin out and they hit the, the 26 car and it spins. And all of a sudden it's Harry Gant's 33 car again. Or it might have been that backwards. But I, we were watching it. Uh, me and my dad and my brother the other day were watching it. And we're, I'm like, wait a minute, rewind that, rewind that. Yeah, and we, watched, and we that. couldn't stop laughing, man. We couldn't stop laughing at it. I'm convinced that Hollywood thinks NASCAR fans are idiots. Because they think that we won't catch those details I, like that. I don't I think. Mean, I, don't think I don't think that's what it is. I think it's just, uh, you know, I, I think it probably is something that happened in editing, and it's like, well, this will fit well, and this will fit well. I don't. I don't think they were sitting there like these dumb rednecks ain't gonna. They're not gonna see this. No, I, I think it was just trying to edit the movie the best way. But still, it's it as a NASCAR fan, it's really funny to look at, and yeah. a lot of the stuff they talk about during it too. I mean, there's some cool stuff about it too, like. Um, Rowdy Burns is based off Dale Earnhardt. Cole Trickle is based off Tim Richmond. Uh, you can really tell that Rowdy Burns, Michael Rooker's character, is based off Earnhardt because the wife looks like almost exactly yeah. like Teresa Earnhardt yeah. at the time. <laughs> so, and, and um, I don't know some pretty bad ones though. Uh, three, the movie. Oh my God, the one made by ESPN. That one was so See, inaccurate. It's, it's, so... it's, it's it. The thing is with that one, like I I love Barry Pepper as an actor. He's really oh, he's really yeah. good. And I think he he played the character well. It's just the inaccuracies of the way it was wrote. Oh, dude, yeah, like like friggin' like they had it the whole time where like DW and 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 Senior just despised each other for like all the t- like you know most of uh, most of the movie, and then all of a sudden like they're like best friends, and it's like barely like brought See, up. Uh, like the- I'm gonna be very I'm gonna have a very unpopular opinion here, but I've really never liked Talladega Nights that much. I I, I think it's completely I've overrated. No, I've heard that. No, I've heard that from like a lot of people. Even Bubba Wallace said that too. He doesn't really get the whole deal behind it. Like I, I don't know. Like you know, you I, know what? I'll specifically like Days of Thunder over over Talladega Nights just to spite Dave Moody, just because I can. <laughs> just to get that. Oh, and one last thing. Did you guys know uh, Tom Cruise actually drove NASCAR in the late '80s? He drove the mellow yellow car. <laughs> According to We're Gonna Lose. That's what he did. <laughs> fun, fun fact about the, uh, the the three movie with Barry Pepper. Uh, Chad McCombie, NASCAR driver, actually yeah. played with Dale Jr. in that. I remember that. That's another NASCAR bus. That's going in the bus video too <laughs> for Chad but, McCombie. But yeah, that. Uh, but yeah, I guess just wrapping up. That's a really fun topic. But back to reality. Um, back to reality. There's actually Gen Seven news, um, but oh, it's not. Uh, it's not like concrete. It's just stuff that they're testing right now. Uh, NASCAR right now is testing a new 18 inch wheel. Uh, I believe, yeah, 18 inch wheel. The current one's 15 inches. Uh, so I guess guys, you know, just whoever wants to go first, what are your thoughts on NASCAR having a bigger wheel? That's probably more close to the production, uh, car. Um, I, I'm, I'm not being rude to you or anything. I don't know who cares. I, I, I'm still not trusting the whole process with the Gen 7, so they can announce testing and all this, but it still feels very rushed to me. And also, I'm, I mean, 18 inches though, too. That's like, isn't that pretty big? It's pretty big. Isn't well, the current it? one or... is the current one is uh, 15, so it, it's well, not probably... too much. It, it's still bigger, but it's not like too much. Yeah, so I, I guess like they want you know they want to make the steering steering wheel some sort of big block or something like that. But but yeah. Um, oh, up oh, another super chat from ooh. Uncle Tom, Tom Uncle Tom Cruise asked, "Did someone say right. Tom Cruise?" Thank you for the two hours super chat. Perfect man. comparison of what it's like to a normal person. <laughs> right here. Anyway, um, I, I will say I found something really interesting though about the report is that they're they're now floating around 2021, 2022. Uh, so again, it's not official; it's just something that they're testing out. But I, yeah, well, I still want to hear what do you guys uh, think about really the this um, news. I don't know. Like, I mean, it's just again, it's like I said, just the process. Like, I'm, I'm not trusting it, but yeah, that's just me. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. It's, I like that, and I did read that. I read that in a separate place as well. That 2022 is a possibility for the Gen Seven, and I do like to hear that they're maybe slowly admitting that 2021 isn't isn't realistic. As far as it's the steering wheel, right? That they're talking about. Yeah, 18 mm-hmm. inches. Or no, the yeah, the yeah. I, thought, I thought it was the the tires. Yeah, like the wheels. Is it the tires? Oh, yeah, yeah, the actual okay. yeah. 
the actual wheel. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> they had they could okay, do their own steering wheel. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say because I knew that they were testing different tires. I didn't know about the size. I thought it was about different things. So I think the tires. That's something they could incorporate even this year or next year, maybe. I I think that it'd be tough to do it now just with how it's all set up. But I do think that it, they're talking more about going higher downforce, uh, you know, and, and lower, lower horsepower and, and more full throttle racing. And I would think having a larger tire would probably, it, it'd probably make the cars easier to drive that way, give them more grip. I mean, just, just the fact that there's more of the tire hitting the ground would just, yeah. you know, on the ground would just mean more grip right there. Uh, so it, it's, you know, on, you know, I think we all know my take, I'm more, you know, getting back to the higher horsepower, but it, it, this is what, nascar is going for i'm not surprised at all by it uh and i, I wouldn't be surprised if they test it out because I, I do think they're pushing it back to 2022 if they they'd be completely insane to do it in 2021 with as as little progress as they've made according to a lot of experts have said uh but i wouldn't be surprised if this is something that's tested out in an all-star race with just some juked out throwaway car uh that that they would try out yeah, um, I mean, just going back to, you know, trying to make these cars easier to drive. I mean, I just, I don't know, like, I, I want them as hard to, for uh, for the drivers to drive as possible. But, 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 but then again, I mean, this is full throttle racing. So, like, it's not really much of a well, challenge. it's on the just, table. You know, it's on but, the table, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's on the table. But still, like, I don't, I don't know, like. I don't really think it'll make much of a difference in the grand scheme of things anyway. So, uh, and, you know, just hearing that they might push it back a year or, or, or two for the gen seven, I can, I can live with that too. I mean, just gives, uh, gives, uh, gives NASCAR more time to plan out for it, uh, for the gen seven there. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess seeing how we wrapped up on on this topic, there's another topic, a very I think that we can all be unanimous on that we're happy to see. Uh, Darren, I think seeing how you hung out with him this weekend, tell us about <laughs> Ryan Vargas's big announcement today. Yes, he will be making his his Xfinity Series debut at Iowa in the number fifteen. Um, it's not it's not Flex Seal, but I mean it's uh, we call it, um, everyone calls it the uh, the Flex Seal car, the number fifteen Flex Seal car. For JD Motorsports, man, he told me about this on Saturday, and my face just lit up, dude. I was like, "What? It's like you're really gonna, you're 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 gonna make your Xfinity Series start in a couple weeks here? That is so cool." Um, made the official announcement today, and uh, I mean, Iowa is one of his uh, most favorite tracks. It's honestly one of his best tracks. Uh, in his only start there in the K and N series, he was running inside the top five until got caught up in some problems and had some problems with the car. Um, so it was uh, relegated to, um, I think, a low, like a 25th, 26th place finish. But uh, whenever he runs there, he uh, seems to be pretty good. Um, uh, you, you know, I just want to say this, too. Um, for, for some of these k and series guys in the East and the West, oh, sorry, what usually happens is once you get let go from your team, you never hear from them again. But – uh, Vargas has uh, he stayed very positive throughout the whole thing and was able to uh, he you know was still putting in a ton of work behind the scenes um, still running at his local short track at at Irwindale Speedway um, battling for the points lead uh, down at his local racetrack and you know behind the scenes is still putting these deals together um, he told me he does not care for the K N N or the Truck Series he just wants to go straight to Xfinity not on a full time basis but you know every every once in a while in, in a while just run some races there um, and again like I'll, this all goes back really to Rev Racing I feel like Rev Racing was just very unfair with them um, you know after one season you basically cut them like they wanted to um, scale back from a three to a to a uh, to a to a, a two car team. Um, I understand that, but the two other guys they have now, they've been there for three to four years and have done little to nothing there. So, I mean, Vargas in his first year, I mean, finished ahead of one of the, one of the guys up there and was even competing for wins from time to time too, over like more times than none over some of the other guys down there. So I don't know, sort of, uh, you know, I, I like, uh, you know, Hey, I gotcha. You know, you were wrong type deal here. Uh, yeah. thing for Vargas and stuff. And good for him, man. Um, it, it I, I could see him getting a top 15. I'll go, I'll go as far as that. He is that good here. I'll see him. I can see him getting a top 15 here. And I think this is a great opportunity for Ryan. Uh, this is obviously, this is a team who uh, supported Ross Chastain for, for a vast majority of his career up until, you know, where he currently is and the opportunity that Ross has been able to get. 
And uh, the, the folks over at JD Motorsports, although I don't know everything entirely behind the scenes, I do know a lot of people who do work over there. Uh, me and Ryan have a lot of mutual uh, acquaintances from over the years who are now with JD Motorsports. And they really, from what, everything I, I've been able to gather on that team, they really look like they're, they are real big into giving opportunities where they're needed for those trying to get into the sport. Right on. Yeah. And like um, the whole, um, the whole deal with him, um, he's uh, running some charity on his car too. It's not actually flex Heel, but it's going to be a red car with like uh, the, uh, uh, the charity logos on it and stuff. So uh, good deal for him, man. I'm, I'm so proud of him, man. I'm so happy for him. Yeah. Same, same. I mean, I noticed a lot, you know, in following him on Twitter and on social media that he, he's putting it out there, everything that he's doing, Hey, I'm racing here. I'm racing here. You know, I, it, it it's one of those deals where I'd, I'd say somebody with a weaker resolve would just sort of be like crap you know I, I guess i'll just go down to the local short track or just get a normal job but you know he kept at it kept grinding at it uh kept you know moving ahead i guess is, is what i'm saying he he didn't let that set him back and now you know he's gonna be making his xfinity debut uh i i think that's you know if, if we had asked him back when he was on the podcast, hey, so uh, you'll be making an Xfinity race, uh, you'll be racing Xfinity Series, say, July. I, I bet you he would be probably more happy than he is right now about it. Uh, so it's just a really cool deal. I'm really happy for him. And, uh, man, we, we need to get him back on here so we can talk to uh, an Xfinity Series driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we already talked to Brendan Brown this year. Get another one on there, too. Be cool. Yeah, it's awesome though for Ryan. Just because, like you said, Jerry, he's on social media. He's also like he's very honest with the good and the bad things that come with racing and that go on with his career. So it is cool. I mean, the little bit I've talked to him, we've had him on the podcast. You can tell he's just really a genuine good guy. He's worked as hard as anyone for this, and I hope he makes the most of it. I'm glad that it's a track he's good at, and I think it's with a team that yeah, I think uh, like y'all said, top fifteen. I wouldn't rule that out. And I think that could be uh, awesome. I wouldn't rule out a surprise performance. We could see him sneaking in there for a top 10, top five. Uh, I don't want to put the expectations too high on him. I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but uh, I know he's going to work hard for it. And I know uh, he's going to try and make most of this. Definitely. And uh, I guess moving to a different Xfinity series team really quick. I'll just, we got a very short uh, lightning round before our last two topics and picks. Um, And then a a new segment after picks that I think people are going to like that we'll be doing uh so colleague racing you know we knew them for the one two three turned into a one two finish uh aj allmendinger has been signed to race with them in the xfinity series at watkins Glen. so a great opportunity for aj and colleague racing to possibly get another win uh also megadeth is going to be sponsoring tyler reddick uh and i can already tell you right now that uh whether it's at bristol or some other time uh that it's released i will be getting that die cast car for my younger cousin who's a megadeth fan so she's watching that's your birthday present that's awesome yeah, I, didn't, I didn't hear that news. Make it. that's, that's one i could see not being made yeah but, I, I don't know i hope they'd make it i'd support them it'd make it like a cd pre-order bonus get the yes. free die cast car if you pre-order whatever next megadeth cd is the first cd i ever owned when i was like a five-year-old was a megadeth was countdown to extinction so that's actually really <laughs> funny i'd get that die cast too if that came out oh well, yeah i'm totally getting it and if depending on how much a custom one is i'd, I'd try and get it but i i just want to get it because my my cousin isn't the biggest nascar fan but she is uh a, a big megadeth and and metal fan so i'd just be like yep totally like congrats happy birthday oh you don't want it okay it's mine um but any, anyway uh and then uh let's see yeah that, that's about it uh i guess we could really quick talk about company man danny you know you you talk about this one this was actually one of your requests a long time ago company man made a video yeah. and i think we'll like it yeah a long long time ago and i was i was watching before i got on here um long long time ago i, I tweeted out to company man and and suggest to him, hey, you know, you should definitely look into doing a NASCAR video one day. I feel like it'd be really, really good topic for you to really look into. You may, you may find out some things you didn't know. And I said, you know, if if, if you wanted to, you know, if you want someone to collaborate with on this, just reach out to me. That didn't happen. But I am happy that he made it. Um, looking at it, though, like, it's a good video. But there are some things that did uh, come off as, I don't know, not too good like you can definitely tell he's not he's not a nascar fan but he still made the video and i guess it makes it a little bit 
a um, little bit harder for me to watch it just because you know you can definitely tell he's not really too familiar with the sport but he's still really good at what he does his content really inspires what i do on my channel and yeah i'm glad he uh, he finally took took the spin down to the nascar guys oh yeah dude the freaking company man video dude that was like so it was so accurate it was like some uh, like he didn't miss a beat he didn't miss uh, a single thing on there like you know i'm um, talking about the personalities leaving the sport the certain drivers leaving uh, you know, it, you know, NASCAR becoming more safer. Um, and even, you know, going as far as to even talk about the playoffs too, which I don't really think in, you know, any other video where, you know, someone's talking about, you know, NASCAR and, you know, why it's, you know, not as big as it once was. I don't think I've ever heard of any of anyone else talking about the playoffs. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm talking about, you know, YouTubers who aren't necessarily NASCAR YouTubers. They're just going to talk about NASCAR for that one video, you know, um, and you know, talked about the uh, the um, the economy having um, a big uh, something, you know, a huge deal in it as well. So that, that was overall a great video. And just, and then just like the funniest part was looking at the the comment section and like it was basically like every na every single NASCAR YouTuber and like NASCAR community member was just like in there, just like just like giving their two cents about the whole deal. Yeah, I liked I liked it in the sense that for a non or a very casual NASCAR fan, because that's who his audience is reaching. Very few people who watch his videos are hardcore NASCAR fans. It's a good, it's like the Spark Notes version of what's kind of happened to NASCAR over the last 15 years. And so I think it's good in that respect. I kind of agree with you, though, Danny. It's It missed some details here and there. But I think for just the casual sports fan or casual anybody who wants to know about where NASCAR has been for the last little while, I think it did do a pretty good job of that. And I like what you, you I agree with you, Darren. I looked in the comments and it was like, Carnation was the first yeah. comment I saw. So I was yeah. like, oh, gosh, yeah. of course. Land, NASCAR <laughs> racing fan, all those guys. It's like, Carnation, you're here too? Yeah, I, um, I, for me, I, I, I don't really think there's too much I can really add to this that you guys haven't already said. I mean, it kind of reminded me of when like Five Points makes videos on NASCAR. Because uh, I've noticed, you know, there's, there's guys like, tree and uh emblemon those guys were fans before and you know emblemon from what i've heard is still a jimmy johnson fan uh and you can tell they know what they t they're talking about they have they've had their their elbows deep into the sport and then you got somebody like company man and five points who you know they find i i, I totally think he finds the topic interesting uh and i think that most people when they look at it find you know what nascar went through from the probably honestly from the 90s and 80s all the way through to about you know the the end of the last tv contract really interesting and, and just how it rose and fell and all that um but i i did get the sense that he definitely was out of his element with it uh but at the same time he was very accurate he was very um he he didn't go it what it didn't turn into a bash fest i guess uh, yeah. it, it, it kind of reminded me, like you like said, of the spark notes of the sort of the watered down version of, of Kamikaze's video on it, uh, which if you haven't watched that one, really good video. Uh, the title is a little bit misleading cause you, you <laughs> think it's just going to be a rant. It's, it's really, really good. Um, but that's what I see it as. I see it as more of like, <laughs> for lack of a better word, of like a gateway video into the sport. And if you want to learn more about it, well, then there's these other ones. Uh, but I loved seeing so many people in the in the comments. I was like, oh, Carnation's there, David Land's there, uh, and then so many other people I see commenting on my videos were there. It's like this is this is cool. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Company Man, nice job with the video, man. It was it was I enjoyed watching it. Uh, really quick, I was reminded by the chat. Uh, my apologies that I forgot to show the poll. So I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, share. Oh, that's screen. right. We forgot. Yeah. I forgot right. the yeah. poll. Oh, I also, have um, almost forgot this, too. Almost forgot this. 144 watching, only 80 likes. Make sure lick. to lick the like button. So uh, we tied the record, 3.5 thousand votes of what we thought. And this one really surprised me. Uh, people were much more happy with the Kentucky race than they were with Daytona. Uh, the net positive was 85% uh, compared to Daytona, where the net positive was 69%. Nice um nice but I'm, I'm just you know looking down here a little bit uh carnation put iffy race but incredible finish i knew carnation would be the first comment um rocky raccoon finish a plus race b minus uh evan said best race kentucky best finish of kentucky 
Uh, let's see, just scroll, scroll, scroll. That that one looked like it was Nick Bromberg's for a minute. Uh, Crazy Kirker <laughs> says, uh, race is very meh, but the finish is probably the best all year. Uh, great finish, still uh, mad over Byron. Let's see, going down more. Uh, Cito Brown says, that was an insane finish, I'll tell you. Like Stevens, that finish was epic. That's what that's what it's all about. Uh, cool 200, average race with an outstanding finish. Uh, do, 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 do. uh, when I'm mad, I'm mad says that, uh, it was so horrible till Bubba got the last caution. <laughs> so that's, uh, I guess that's what you guys are thinking. Um, there, there's some funny ones that I, I'm not going to read, but there's, there's some pretty, there's some gems in there. I'll just say that. But, yeah. uh, again, thank you all for voting and the poll will be up right after the New Hampshire race to this coming, uh, weekend. Uh, I'm just so I guess so, what do you, yeah, what do you guys think about what the rest of the people think? I'm just so surprised that 53% thought it was a great race. That's just so it's so shocking. I mean, everyone's just been they like all week bashing Kentucky Speedway and then oh, I guess it takes one great finish, just one great finish, you know, one two lap dash to 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 the finish there uh to change their minds real quick. I mean, I, I mean again, I don't I don't really see like what was so great about it you know i mean you can make the argument that well it was a good race but i mean great eh, no i i, I don't i don't <laughs> only one two three in the chat says that the kentucky race is like star wars the phantom menace the beginning is meh, kind of meh but the ending was it was uh super climactic <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh danny what do you think then i'll be uh sorry I, i've actually been looking at something else and i apologize for that oh. <laughs> well I, i'll give my thoughts i think it goes really obvious or it's, it was probably why you made your video this week jared about does a good uh finish make a good race because you're right daytona being that low is clearly just people who had nothing better to do during the postponement during the rain delay who were just like ah man i wish they go back green thumbs down you know uh because daytona was a great race with a bad finish this was a okay race for kentucky i thought it was a good race with obviously a great finish so you know you kind of i think that definitely skews it for sure yeah yeah uh okay then one last uh one last topic before we do picks and then remember we have a new new uh segment for after picks that i think people are going to really like so mm -hmm. the vegas burnouts are back for all 16 playoff drivers before the opening uh race of the playoffs they will be televised on nbc sports network at 7 Eastern time, which is 4 Pacific time, Thursday, September 20th. So, uh, Darian, you're the resident Vegas guy. Uh, I'll start with you. What, what do you think about uh, bringing this back? Oh, it's it's pretty awesome, too. Um, I mean, just I was surprised that, you know, they stopped doing it for the longest time because, I mean, uh, like, you know, just the strip. I mean, there's a ton of people on the strip all, all, already as is. And then, you know, you bring NASCAR to, uh, to the strip and stuff and you do burnouts like – Basically, the whole strip stops, and I mean, it's literally right down the street, right from from my uh, from my apartment. And I, I don't know, it's just um, you know, it's a pretty pretty epic atmosphere there. Um, I mean, even last year, um, you had um, some uh, some some star power out there for that. Um, and then everyone just stops what they're doing and they just watch, you know, all sixteen cars do burnouts. You know, it's pretty uh, it's pretty epic. And um, I don't know, good on NASCAR too for uh, for doing that. But they would do it uh, still for the when they came in for the championship celebration, though, correct? Uh, I think they only well no last year they only did it for the uh, just for the race weekend. That's it. Oh, That's they it. didn't yeah. do it for the championship celebration. No, no, it was only for the race weekend. They switched it uh, up. Yeah. Well, I, I hope to do it in Nashville when they come here. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully they they do it out there. Definitely, that'd be cool. Where like where in Nashville would they do it though? uh broadway is like the big big road here in nashville so definitely burnouts on broadway has a good uh, marketing ring to it. that's got it yeah that's got a good yeah that's got a good ring to it burnouts on broadway it's not in new york but it's in nashville though. trademark nashville. Tra trademark at nashville burnouts on broadway yep sell t-shirts danny get on that right now sell some t-shirts all right come on nascar <laughs> let's get together yeah let's do it <laughs> what do you think eric yeah, I like them bringing it back. I like burnouts on the strip. Always like it. Never want to see it go away. Uh, I think timing, yeah, I, I, it works for me. I guess I kind of agree with you guys. I like it. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat. Uh, I think we're all in the same boat here. That it's a, it's a big positive. 
Um, I like one of the comments in the, in the chat was like, uh, burnouts on the strip and then let's go raid area 51. Uh, just, rem just a reminder to everybody. Cause that's, I think what September 20th is the, the area 51 thing. Um, you know, there's going to be a bunch of those crazy weebs that are going to be like staying out in <laughs> Vegas for the week. Uh, so I'd say probably if you're going to Vegas for the race, like get, get the hotels probably early. Cause I, you know, there's going to be a bunch of crazy, there's going to be at least 10,000 oh crazy. Oh, people yeah. out there. Oh, yeah. Wait, I didn't even realize. Is that race weekend? Uh, the race weekend would be September 18th, I believe. And the yep. raid is two days later. So, oh my gosh, that's all. Oh, that's going to be great. You're going to have like everyone just, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to No, I can just imagine like one of them just, just like goes out and, Dude, this is what could be the next like fence climber. We could have somebody yeah. who jumps on the fence, goes on the track, and starts Naruto running, seeing if they can beat him. I'm yeah. Confirmed. Uh, I got a question. I got a question. Which NASCAR driver in the Cup Series um, would you um, um, would you see joining this raid? Oh, totally, Clint Boyer. <laughs> I see. No, honestly, I think Ryan Blaney would probably do that. Dude, honestly, I think, I guess, yeah, I'd, I'd say Blaney. I, I yeah. could see a bunch of them being down on this. Honestly, like Blaney, Elliot, Bubba. Um, not Byron because he's boring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, you know, I'm just thinking of young drivers, and for some reason he came so, to my head. I'm like, no, never mind. So, fellas, I'll get, we're all in agreement that all the cars that don't crash in the race, we're using those to storm Area 51, okay? <laughs> well, yeah. We're going to mount machine guns on the top of them to fight back. So, yeah. Didn't they do that in a Transformers movie? I think I remember like Jimmy Johnson being a Transformer with like oh, turrets yeah. or something. Yep. That, that's uh, a that's yeah, what we're storming Area 51 in. Those things right there. I, I yeah, best the NASCAR name. movie ever. I forget what the name <laughs> of that they called them. But even then, you, you didn't even really see them, and it made no sense of why they even showed up. Yeah, yeah, I know. They were just they came out of nowhere. I don't know. I think Ron Pablo Montoya like was in it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Montoya Jr. and jo and and Johnson. Yeah. Well, I, was, I mean, to I be was... fair. To be fair, Montoya was probably used to blowing stuff up around 2011, 2012. So yeah, yeah. So. There, there Love was it. a better way they could have done. There was a better way they could have done that scene, and I wish. I don't know why there wasn't anything about it because like they just showed up. I think it was in Chicago, so they could have easily in, done yeah. some. Mm -hmm. They could easily done something at Chicago Land. The race going on. All of a sudden, like like just have Junior Johnson and Montoya just looking around. Like wait a second, where do cars go? NASCAR bus Transformers. I, I don't <laughs> wonder how much NASCAR paid for that ad space there, basically for that. Like, just have your cars in there. Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, what I do know is that picks are next. So, oh, who, which one of you wants to start off with? Who uh, will uh, suck? Well, I, I'll say this: I do have to go, unfortunately, because they're doing presents, and I have to be there because oh, I got, I got oh, my friend. Uh, um, I got, I got him something good. But uh, I'll tell you my what pick to win this week. I think this is the week Kevin Harvick finally gets it done. He won here last year. It's a track where the aero package isn't going to play as big a factor. I think it's Harvick wins. So, uh, sorry I have to bail, guys. I'll be back next week on the podcast and for the next several weeks completely uninterrupted. So, I apologize for that. But I want to be back because this is, y'all, one of the most fun things each week. So, I'll be back soon. Yeah. Sorry, y'all. I missed um, you, dude. Yeah, I don't care where you are, man. I just missed it. Missed having you on. Yeah. Bye, bye, man. The prodigal son has returned and now he right. leaves again. <laughs> <Better> <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I I should have I should jump in the pool for you guys. No, I'm not doing that. I'm going to no, show. No, I, I got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. Have a good have a good rest of your show. You too, right. man. Thanks, Later, man. Bye. All right. So Eric picked Harvick to win. All right. Uh. So I guess Danny, who's gonna suck? New Hampshire is a really tough one for me to think of. Who's really not good here? Because it seems like there's never. There's never any really consistency that I seem to find with like who's running really great and who's running really poor here. So I think in my my who's gonna suck pick is just gonna be purely some who do I feel is gonna have some bad luck this weekend and just going on a whim. Let's say Brad Keselowski. Um, mm. we'll, we'll say this will be a suck weekend for Keselowski. Stenhouse, 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 Stenhouse. Oh my gosh, Fastenal is going to be the sponsor? Yeah, yeah I, I believe they are. Last year, um, he was in a lot um, a lot closer range to make the playoffs, and he essentially screwed over himself driving the car way too hard. And also, Fastenal's on the car this week, so you know what that means. The BFM curse is in full effect this weekend. So, yeah, Stenhouse is going to suck. 
See, I was looking through, and I, I know that obviously with being on worse teams, it bogs the stats down, but Alex Bowman's worst, one of his worst tracks is New mm-hmm. Hampshire. Yeah. I'm sorry. Good. I'm sorry, Danny. <laughs> But uh, no, he, that, he, that, that, that's fair. I honestly yeah. should have. I honestly should have reconsidered that one. Proceeds to pick him for the winner. <laughs> no, I'm not picking him for the winner. <laughs> Watch he does. Him, I'm not even picking him for an underdog. Oh damn. <laughs> damn. Uh, I guess I I carry the mantle now of Bowman being picked every week. So, uh, but yeah, Alex Bowman, 27.7 average finish. Uh, he's been in, th- I believe, three New Hampshire races now with Hendrick. Uh, and to think that you know he really hasn't raised his average too much no wins no top fives no top tens best finish was last year with 11th but still uh alex bowman i I just i think this might be one of those down weekends in what is for the most part been a pretty good year so dark horses good dark horses go ahead danny do your thing this is gonna be my underdog yep um See, it is going to be a Hendrick driver just because uh, he had a pretty good he had a pretty good week the last weekend. Had a little misfortune. He's been showing signs and signs of improvement. His crew chief has had wins here in the past with Jimmy Johnson. William Byron is going to have a underdog shot this weekend. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that as well. That was going to be my underdog pick right there. Um, he's not going to go for the win again, as we uh, discussed earlier in the show. Uh, Chad Knauss is going for points. Um, basically. So I feel like um, he's definitely going to be going for um, all of those uh, top 10 stage points. Um, I'll even go as far as to say probably maybe top 10 finish in stage one, maybe a top five in stage two, and then sort of just ro- some uh, sort of um, sort of just, you know, right around the field and hopefully, you know, end up with the top 10. I mean, because even if he gets a top 15, he'll still get top 10 points for um, getting all of those stage points, which is a major flaw in the system, but you know that's for another episode. But uh, yeah, so William Byron, that's my underdog pick. So uh, I guess we're just going with the, uh, I guess we're just going with the Hendrick theme for dark horse picks. Um, I'm picking Chad Knauss's former driver, Jimmy Johnson, as my underdog pick. He's got three wins, ten top fives, twenty two top tens, and he finished tenth here last year, which was argued I would say was worse than this year. Uh, I think Jimmy. You know, he needs that bounce back. I know I, I was dogging on him earlier, uh, but it feels so weird. He's got a 10.6 average finish here, but just still, it feels so weird saying a seven-time champion is a dark horse pick. This must have been how Petty fans felt in the early 90s and oh, late 80s. Um, dude, that was a totally different level of bad. <laughs> that's a bad season. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's but, one I haven't done yet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Jimmy will be the dark horse pick. Jimmy! And yeah, as Marut says, Jimmy. Something like that. I can't even do it. Well, I can't even do it. Now, now we're going for W's. Uh, who's getting the win this week? Who's going to be like me and pick the right winner this week? Um, oh, yeah, 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 congrats. Right. You got you got one. Yeah, you got one, man. Congratulations. You got one. And, and hey, congrats. We're almost at a year from your Watkins Glen moment there. Right? That's right. We are, man. We are, man. <laughs> okay. So, for me, the winner, I'd love to actually agree with Eric on this one. I do think it's ridiculous that Kevin Harvick has not won. However, my actual winner pick is going to be Kyle Busch. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to go with either um, – well, here's my top three. Um, it was either Kevin Harvick, based off of last year, Kyle Busch, or Martin Truex Jr., um, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the safe bet here. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. Uh, gets his fifth win of the season. Um, it's just crazy, man. Just, I remember that 19 team for the past two seasons, they were just struggling. And then pretty much, um, heading, heading into this season, like we were like, well, no, let's not put all, all of these, uh, all of these expectations on Truex just yet. Cause that team is still new. They're still going to, you know, like some of the team has the 78 guys, but you know, you didn't know if they were going to be the same or not. And I mean, he's, been on beat this year you know it's like you know switches teams and he hasn't missed a beat so really um shows um really um shows a lot about you know um what furniture row had um so yeah martin Truex jr scores his fifth win of the season and effectively takes the points lead in the playoffs not the not the regular season standings the playoffs it's funny to look back on it's funny to look at the way the 19 team has done and Truex has been able to get four wins that's two wins to make it for the last two years and then two more just for this year yeah, so mix it up in one season, right? <laughs> so I'm looking here, and once again, we're all on the same team for the same column. Uh, we were with Hendrick, 
for Dark Horses, and now we're all in with Gibbs for winning outside of Eric. Uh, hmm. Eric's the Lone Ranger out there uh, yeah. with, with Harvick. But I'm also going to be picking Kyle Busch. Uh, and I was looking at his stat line, and unlike Jimmy Johnson, he is not in a slump. Uh, if his slump is what Jimmy Johnson wishes his year so far could be, um, if this is a slump. So, he's got a 12.8 average finish here. He finished second here last year, but I think that he is in the same place he was last year, and Kevin Harvick has moved down a step. Uh, so I don't see Harvick moving him out of the way this time. He's got three wins here, 11 top fives, and 15 top tens. I think Kyle Busch, he is the man to beat. The Bush brothers, I think, go back-to-back. Uh, and you know what, with that prediction, I'm at least 50% right, so I can't be completely wrong this week. Uh, so Kyle Busch, I say, he's going to be your winner at New Hampshire. Uh, also, really quick, we got one last segment we're going to do, and then announcing a pretty good guest we got next week. I think you all like Mm -hmm. who's going to be on, but, um, really quick, I'm just going to leave the camera on me for now. I will mute these guys. Um, so... This is a really cool thing we wanted to start doing. Uh, we, we always see a lot of a lot of negative in in the community, and, and sometimes it's rightly so, but there's also a lot of good stuff. Uh, Runnings Racing, he's been a, a big follower of ours for over a year now. Really cool guy. Um, DMs us a lot of cool things. A lot of the stuff you've seen us talk about on the podcast, we heard from him. Uh, and just you know, take a look. His Had Jimmy Johnson record a video uh, to show his grandmother, who is a big Jimmy Johnson fan. He put it on Twitter, too, but we'll just show it here uh, for you guys. So uh, without further ado, it's only two minutes. I think you guys will really like it, but uh, just check this out. Wait a minute. Don't leave that. Yes, this is for you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, look look at it so you can wear it. Oh, sharp. I know, it looks nice. I know how you like that car. But, do you remember what you asked me yesterday when I asked you if I could get you something? What it was? No. You said, if I, if I could get you anything, it'd be Jimmy Johnson. I got the best, closest thing. Okay? Hold on. Did you hear it? Yeah. Who's the kids yelling bad? I don't know, but did you see who that was, though? Jimmy Johnson. And he's saying hi to you. Can you hear him? Yeah. I asked him if he'd do that for me. And I heard him. <laughs> you like it? Yes. I thought you would. You know I would. Gavin could just kidnap Jimmy <laughs> and bring him back, so. I had to compromise a little bit. He's nice enough to do it. Mommy crying. Yeah, that was just amazing. I, I when I saw that here, let me make sure this is all good. Uh, when I when I had saw that, I just knew we had we had to share it. It was really heartwarming moment, and uh, I'm just you know, there, there's yeah. not much to really add to that. Really quick, Darren, let me make sure that uh, you show up. I just want to make sure I get everything right, and then we'll announce right. who our special guest is. But uh, what do you guys think about that? That's something we'll start each week is just showing the good that that people in the community do. And that was, again, such a good thing. It, it just shows right there if you're a driver, a media member, if it's just if you're someone that people look to for to just get away or to just you know make their life a little bit better, just the effect that you can have. Uh, so I guess uh, what you know. If you guys have anything, 
Yeah, like it was pretty cool. Like it was a pretty cool video. Um, I actually talked to this guy like almost uh, every other week. So we go back and forth through DMs. Um, he's telling me some NASCAR news. We're, <clears throat> I don't know, we're just talking about NASCAR all the time. And then, you know, I saw that video and stuff and that was pretty cool. And um, he was telling me, um, you know, how he was really happy to meet Jimmy Johnson. And, you know, basically his, uh, his, his childhood hero for the most part. And, um, um, even sent me like this other thing too. Uh, he told me not to share it or anything, which I won't, but I mean, what he wrote there was pretty cool. And then like, you know, the video, I mean, it really speaks for itself, man. It's absolutely amazing. Agreed. It's just very, very sweet. The video, video tells it all. It tells the whole story right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just, you know, if, if you, if, you know, something comes up that you see that's great in the community. Uh, don't just feel free to, to DM it to us if, or if you post it. Uh, cause that, that's something we just want to end on a good note each week. Mm -hmm. Uh, it seems like something that's, you know, I think everybody can enjoy these little moments where, you know, get away from the racing and com competition aspect and just, you know, these are all, we're all people. We're all in the same boat, got our struggles and, and, for for Johnson even to take those few seconds out of his time to to say that and do that it you you saw the effect it had it's yep. it's just an amazing amazing deal um but I I don't think guys is there anything else really to add other than who our our guest will be next week all right so yeah so next week uh we will be on Black Lives Matter again and we're gonna have two driver guests so unfortunately the C J McLaughlin interview uh, we did earlier we had a ton of audio problems with that. Um, um, we will make, we will, we will make up for it and we'll have him back on next week. Um, it'll be a, a little, uh, pre-recorded segment. And then also K and N West series star Jagger Jones will be on, um, pretty cool name uh, the son of PJ Jones, um, almost won his first race in his debut, um, ended up finishing second, unfortunately out here at the LVMS dirt track. Um, one of the up and coming stars of NASCAR, um, can't wait to talk to him about his K and N West series season absolutely it's gonna be a great show unfortunately i will not get to be here i'm scheduled to work until nine o'clock next week so i won't be able to be here at all during that time that sucks man but we we got some pretty uh we're not gonna say it yet but we got some pretty cool stuff like the four of us on the podcast panel know like what we got planned up there's some good stuff mm -hmm. down the pipeline mm -hmm. yeah, and uh yeah we there's plenty of, of time to make up but uh you know i'm, I'm gonna mute you guys here uh, thank you guys so much. Oh, Flying Gator with 199 Super Chat. Next week, Eric Asap will be on his guest. <laughs> yeah, Eric, will, Eric has the ability to be a guest on his own uh, show. But uh, I'll mute these guys here. Uh, it's just, been, it's been a great day. It's been great to, to see you all as usual. Um, yeah, we'll be on Darian's channel next week. So make sure you watch Black Flags Matter. Same time as this week. Got a lot of stuff planned. Uh, but I guess until next time, I uh, have a good one. Green flag, green flag. Oh, well.